Hello and welcome to the episode 320 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. An early gig, the recording for an appearance on the Friday Spectacular, and the filming of Top of the Pops are some of the stories we'll be focusing on in this episode. Let's start with some prehistory. On the 16th of November 1957, the Quarrymen performed live at the Stanley Abattoir Social Club, two sets of rock and roll and skiffle in front of Slaughterhouse personnel and their wives for a dance event. The sets were described as cacophonous and the band was never booked again. The Quarrymen featured Langari on T-chest bass, Eric Griffiths on guitar, Colin Hanton on drums, and John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice. Three years further down the line, in 1960, another quintet, this time under the name of The Beatles, was on the stage of the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for their nightly appearance. The band featured John Lennon, Paul McCartney and George Harrison on guitar and voice, Stu Sutcliffe on bass and Pete Best on drums. In 1962, the Beatles, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass and Ringo Starr on drums, recorded their second appearance on Radio Luxembourg's The Friday Spectacular, with live audience reacting to their debut single and the band being interviewed by the radio host. The radio show was paid by EMI and recorded at the EMI House in Manchester Square, London as we detailed in episode 281. This particular show was broadcast on the 23rd of November, from 10 to 11 pm. Chaos reigned on the 16th of November 1963, when the Beatles played the Winter Gardens Theatre in Burnmouth for their autumn tour. The event wasn't particularly chaotic compared to other dates of the tour, but it still came as a bit of a shock for the three different camera teams from the major American TV corporations – NBC, CBS and ABC. The crews were present to film some material for the respective network news reports, to satisfy the curiosity of the American public about this new phenomenon called Beatlemania. Bits of the performance and some footage of the public going wild were broadcast on the 18th, 19th and 21st of November, and then on the 7th of December. In general, as usual with any new phenomenon, the comments were less than favourable and rather patronising, offending both the band and its fans. In 1964, the Beatles were at the Riverside Studios in London to film their participation to BBC One's Top of the Pops. The episode, with the Fabs filming the two songs on their newest single, I Feel Fine and She's a Woman, was rehearsed and filmed between 2 and 5 pm, and aired on the 3rd of December between 7.30 and 8 pm. Moving to 1965, we get producer George Martin deciding on the final running order of Rubber Soul in Abbey Road, before the final master was sent to EMI for the pressing of the album. Not that far away, in Sludge, Paul McCartney served as a compare for a Gene Pitney show, announcing each act from behind the stage curtain. Peter and Gordon were on the bill, and Paul had decided to attend the concert. Peter was Jane Asher's brother, and Jane Asher, if you don't know, was Paul's girlfriend at the time. Another thing you might not know is how to support this podcast and the production of further content by yours truly. Why, there's an extremely simple solution. Head to www.simonmas.com support at the end of the episode and check the many things you can do. One more thing before closing shop. On the 16th of November 1967, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film went on at Norman's Film Productions. And with this, we can close the episode. Remember to check out my website. 
Tomorrow we'll talk about what Paul McCartney called the worst first night ever for the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.